Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. Um, so thank you for doing this podcast with me. I appreciate your time. Tell me, so this is Prani, my guest. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your background. You started out um, in legal, in insurance defense, and now you have your own law firm. So will you talk a little bit about um, coming out of law school and starting in you know, just the legal field. We have a lot of aspiring six-figure earners that watch this. So there's probably a lot of people that your journey will really impact them. Yeah. So, you know, um, I actually graduated from law school at a time where it was not economically very um, favorable for attorneys. You know, we, I graduated in 2008, the economy kind of crashed. Um, and prior to that, I was Externing for a judge while I was in law school and I worked at firms and so forth. But um, due to the crash, it made things a little bit difficult when it, um, you know, based on your decision making process of what type of firms you can work at. And when I graduated, there was an insurance defense firm that was hiring. You know, I was um, working there on contract and then they took me on. And I, I actually feel really fortunate to have that experience because I was able to learn a lot of things about liability that really comes in um, my practice now as an estate planning attorney to understand the scope of people's exposure to risk. And that's something that I got as an insurance defense litigator. And also, you know, I have a math background. So having to speak in front of people was never um, my strong suit. And I liked the aspect of reading. And that's why I kind of went to law school. So being forced out of my comfort zone and my shell, mm -hmm. you know, um, really also made me explore a different side of myself that I wouldn't have been able to do but for the fact that I was at a litigation firm. Mm -hmm. um, and that also really helps with, you know, that brought my confidence up, but it also really helped into, you know, opening a firm by myself because it gave me the confidence to go ahead and do that um, and also to understand what is needed when it comes from a, I guess, marketing standpoint. So mm -hmm. um, that's kind of my trajectory. I worked at a state planning firm prior to going out on my own. So I was able to, you know, learn a lot there because I worked with a lot of high net worth clients. And then um, I've been out on my own for about four years now. Isn't it interesting? I think I've interviewed so many women from so many different backgrounds and fields. And it's so interesting to hear each of their journeys, but what one common theme, which is something that you said, is a lot of times it's the adversity that forces us into an area that we wouldn't have chosen otherwise, but ends up being this really, really great experience even though you don't know it going in, right? You almost go yes. in, I think, sometimes like kicking and screaming, like, <laughs> I don't want this, I right? know, 100%. Yeah. Um, and it's one of those things where I always um, kind of encourage it in my children, where I'm like, you know what, this is going to make a really good college essay <laughs> because <laughs> I am not buying you this toy and you are crying right now. <laughs> And this, you know, I'm giving you the stepping stones of realities that's, you know, going to kind of foster your personality. <laughs> but yes, I, so cute. Um, I totally understand. And it's one of those things where, you know, um, you kind of roll with the punches. And I think it's really all about perspective. You know, yeah. the fact that I was able to have a job in 2008, you know, I was grateful for that. And I was surrounded by very... Um, upstanding attorneys, you know, so I took advantage of being around them and, you know, I was able to get a lot of mentoring and also they fostered me as an attorney. And, you know, that's something that I, I don't regret. And I, you know, I'm really grateful for. Mm -hmm. It's such a great, such a great lesson. Yeah. So you decided to branch off on your own. You're a mom of two boys. I yes. neglected to say that. You're a mom <laughs> of two boys. Yes. And you decided to create your own firm, which is really this very different 
kind of beast altogether, owning your own, any kind of company. 100%. But yeah. So will you talk about that? How was that for you? Okay. So I think a big reason why I left um, the firm that I was at was because we wanted to grow our family mm -hmm. and, you know, having a very high demanding job puts a lot of stress on women or just anybody. And, you know, when you add on the layer of trying to grow your family and it, it's just really crippling almost so for us the best choice for our family was to have something that would have a little bit more work-life balance um and i just you know was kind of ready to grow myself as an individual like i felt like i had enough experience under my belt but i also felt enough that confidence in my relationships with my clients that i knew that i would be able to set myself apart by connecting with them and you know having a brand for myself mm -hmm. um and so i did that and and obviously right when you do something on your own you get pregnant <laughs> and you know <laughs> I'm, I'm navigating this whole world of marketing for myself um starting my own practice and also you know having a baby that i'm trying to grow in my belly so it was it was it was interesting because, you know, at the time you always look in retrospect and you, you're always like, wow, I can't believe I did that. But, you know, while you're going through it, you just roll with the punches almost. And that was kind of the experience for me. But, you know, four years later, I look back and I'm just in complete awe of who I was four years ago to be able to, you know, handle that and to be where I'm at now and to have made those choices in difficult times. Um, to kind of get to the point that where we wanted to be at as a family, which mm -hmm. was, you know, to have another child, but also to have a little bit more flexibility. So those were our two um, important things in our lives. And um, I feel like we're so much closer to that than we were four years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? I think, again, so many of us, even though we're so different as people, we really have the same core desires, which yeah. is spend quality time with family 100%. and not stress about income right yes. i mean really at the end of the day for i think for most people yeah especially working moms i think yeah so will you um touch on a little bit so you started this practice and you were pregnant at the time and then you obviously had a young child and you still have a young child he's three yeah right I think um, something that might be really interesting for our listeners, because we have a lot of women that are aspiring to six figures. Okay. Will you touch on how did you mentally, like, how did you do that? You, you said you just pushed through or you <laughs> just do what you need to do, yeah. right? But talk about how you handle that mentally, because I don't know that that's a skill set that everybody has where they just push through. Yeah, I, I don't... It's, it's really hard because, you know, I think it has a lot to do with my personality and also the, my background because, um, you know, going through law school, it's a, a, a lot of pushing through, yes. you know, it's a lot of just kind of making your being focused and having an end goal and just, you know, in preparation of that end goal where you're kind of almost in quarantine for months at a time just studying you know because you want to pass the bar um so when this quarantine happened i was telling my husband oh i got this <laughs> you know i was like i've done this before we've been i've been cooped up before you know i got this but after six months i was like i don't got this <laughs> this is really hard but um you know i i would do things that would bring me joy and that you know everybody needs their outlet for me at that time it was yoga that brought me a lot of kind of um, being more centered with myself mm -hmm. um, i kept my close group of girlfriends small and i was you know able to um reach out to them whenever I needed to talk or whenever I was stressed. And I think those were all really um, big parts. And I had, you know, mentors that I could go to where um, I can ask if there was any issues that I have, you know, with opening a new practice and so forth. Um, um, so there was, you know, a handful of things that really, really helped me out. But I don't think, unfortunately, they were not things that I ever did intentionally, you know, with the hopes of kind of 
getting to that. I think they were just things that felt organically natural for me to kind of help me through mm -hmm. the process, you know, like I needed a glass of wine, you know, or I needed to go ahead and stretch. And those were things that, you know, just um, I was able to do for myself because I kind of took the control back and I kind of made my own schedule, which was which was great and also stressful. <laughs> mm -hmm. But those are important, they doing are. things that bring you joy. 100%. Because that really does change you and your attitude when you do that. Yeah. And then I think for all of us, a support system is, I mean, I don't think anyone functions without one, right? Yeah. Especially, especially moms that are trying to balance so many things, so. Yeah, it takes a village, 100%. <laughs> So one of the questions that I always ask my interviewees is, do you remember when you hit six figures and what that felt like? It's so funny because I, when being out on my own, um, I hit six figures and I think my husband was more conscious of it than I was. And he was <laughs> like, you know that <laughs> this awesome. is how much you made this year. Because, you know, when you're in the ins and outs of things, you don't necessarily pay that much attention to the yeah. I guess numbers and so forth and I was like oh and then he was like that's really that's really great I was like yeah <laughs> you know that is really great but you know when you're doing something that you love and you're passionate about mm -hmm. and it and and it's yours it's less work and it's more of just being so yourself so you're not paying attention to the numbers as much as mm -hmm. opposed when you're working with somebody and you're trying to kind of make you're trying to ensure that you make a certain amount of money to pay the bills, you know, mm -hmm. but when you're just doing something you love and you are getting the right response, you know, because of the energy level that is there related to it, I feel that, you know, that is almost kind of a the plus. In itself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that it you, you just hope for, mm -hmm. but you know, you don't necessarily um, are pushing towards because you're doing something that you want and, I don't it's know. Not, There's a big quote. difference. Yeah. It's that quote. And I'm going to totally botch it, but it's something <laughs> like find something you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Something yes. like that. Yeah. No, so I, true. and, and it is, it's, there's so much merit to that quote because that's really where I feel like I'm at in my life. You know, obviously there are bad days, you know, where I'm really stressed right. out or whatever, but you know, the good days definitely outweigh those. <laughs> so one of the other questions that I always ask is, do so podcast or book and is there <laughs> one that you would recommend to our listeners okay so i'm going to probably have a complete fail on this because i haven't listened to any podcast and i know that a lot of people do that um and it's been a really long time since i've read a book because of the bandwidth that, you know, with COVID <laughs> and so have... forth, I know. He's like, like kids books. Yeah, probably. exactly. So <laughs> I have great Dr. Seuss recommendations if anyone wants <laughs> that. Awesome. I know. Or um, the last book, I, I think The Hunger Games was probably the last series I read right. that I was really into. Um, and there's really, you know, it's no, really No, but Dr. Trivial. Seuss is a great one for <laughs> yeah. all of us, I think. <laughs> yeah, well, Dr. Seuss is really deep and profound. And there is a lot of life lessons within it. Yes. Yeah, and it's really smart. Mm -hmm. um, and it's one of those things where he addresses a lot of issues that kids go through in a way where kids can relate to. And also I can relate to because, you know, I haven't read those Dr. Seuss books in such a long time. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I would recommend that. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So I guess in closing, is there anything that I didn't ask you that you think would be really impactful? Our listeners are really made up of women that are aspiring to six figures. And so they're gleaning wisdom from these podcasts. And then women that would be more your counterparts that are in the same kind of place as you where they already have six figures, but they're, they're listening because it's, you know, the people that they relate to. Is there anything that you would want to share? I would say that perspective really, really is a game changer. So no matter what you're going through or what adversity you're going through, there's always a silver lining. And to focus on that, then the, the unnecessary noises, because I think Th that's kind of most important and you don't want to waver unnecessarily um, because you know there is doubt because of something that somebody said or whatnot and 
you know, if you just stay focused and, you know, just have a good perspective and um, just be optimistic, you know, we are so powerful as women. And I feel like you don't even understand, you know, or there are so, so much untapped power within you that you, ha you don't even know about yet. And why not tap that power before you're in an adverse situation and just mm. kind of just shine for everybody. So those would be kind of my closing remarks. That's <laughs> such great wisdom. Thank you. You're thank welcome, you for your Heidi. time and of for course. doing this. Yes. Thank you, Heidi. It's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to momsmakingsixfigures.com. That's right, momsmakingsixfigures.com.